years of Read My Lips, four more years of Dan Quayle, four more years of George Herbert Walker Bush. Are you ready for change? Are you ready to get moving again? Is it time for Bush and Quayle to go? What time is it? Again, what time is it? One more time, what time is it? I give you the next President of the United States of America, Bill Clinton. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You saw a picture of the difference between Bill Clinton and Al Gore and George Bush and Dan Quayle. For yesterday, the Bipartisan Commission on Debates had invited George Bush and Bill Clinton to go to East Lansing, Michigan, to Michigan State. They invited us in June. I said as soon as they invited us, I'll be there. I didn't ask them about the format or how I could be protected or how I could cover myself. I said the American people are entitled to a debate. I'll be there. Eleven days before the debate, Mr. Bush said, I'm going to take a powder. I don't want to come. I don't like the format. And I don't want three debates. I want two, and I want a panel of news people so I can attack my opponent without anybody doing any follow-up questions on me. I don't want that. So yesterday, I went to East Lansing and talked to tens of, not tens of thousands, but 15,000 or so people about what I wanted to do as president. And then I went to Detroit and I answered citizens' questions from five places all over Michigan. Tough questions from working families who had difficult problems and real hopes. And you know what George Bush did yesterday when he could have been debating me? He got on an airplane and flew to six airports in states around my state to dump on my state, that small southern state. Now, he dumped on... He dumped on our economy, but he never told the people at the airport that we have ranked first in the nation in job growth this year, and his own labor secretary said it was enormous. He concealed it from him, and he wouldn't debate me so I could tell him. And then he went to another airport, and he dumped on our environment, but he didn't tell him that we were one of only four states in the country in full compliance with the Clean Air Act, and his own Environmental Protection Agency gave us a dozen awards for environmental progress. He didn't tell them that. And he didn't debate me, so I couldn't tell him. And then he flew to another place, and he talked about how I was a big taxer and spender, but he didn't tell him that he's increased government spending more than any president in 30 years and government regulation more than any president in 20 years, according to the Conservative Heritage Foundation, while we have the second lowest tax burden in the country. He didn't tell him, and he wouldn't debate me, so I couldn't tell him. So he flew all around my state, dumping on Arkansas yesterday. He told them that we let people out of the penitentiary quicker than any state in the country, and somebody from our penitentiary system pointed out that the average prisoner in America serves two years, and in our state, the average prisoner serves two and a half years. It wasn't true, but he wouldn't debate me, so I couldn't tell him. I was in East Lansing to face the music and face the people. He was flying all around Arkansas trying to divert the attention of the American people from the most miserable economic performance in 50 years, failed trickle-down economic special favors for the few. I'm tired of it, we're not gonna put up with it, and we're gonna change it on November the 3rd. When challenged to debate, he said, well, what do you expect? How should I go into debate? Bill Clinton, he's an Oxford man. He went to school in England. One day, I'm a redneck from a little southern state. The next day, I'm an Oxford man. Well, let me tell you, he went to a country day school, a prep school in Connecticut and to Yale. Where does he get off looking up to me as an Oxford man? He got $300,000 from his daddy to start the family business. He ought to stand up and fight for his record instead of dumping on me. Let's talk about what we're going to do for the American people over the next four years. I'm going to tell you something, folks. We've been all over the country in these bus tours, and I love them. 
People come out with their signs. Some of them are for us. Every now and then some of them are against us. But they're all here and we're here facing them. And not very long ago we were in some town. I'm embarrassed. We've been to so many towns I can't remember. There was a great sign right after George Bush gave his speech at the Republican convention. And the sign said, we're not buying it this time, George. This is a guy who says the election's about trust, who said, read my lips and sign the second biggest tax increase in history, who said 15 million new jobs and he's over 14 million new sh short, who badmouthed the government and the only new jobs we've got in America is in government. We've created more private sector jobs in Arkansas than the whole rest of the country has by the time they got through laying people off. This is the first time in American history when we got more people working for government than going to work in factories every day. This is the first time in American history we've ever had a decline in industrial production under this administration. And folks, it's because they're in the grip of a failed idea, trickle-down economics. Keep taxes low on the rich, let government lay down on the job. The bill and census says that most people in this country and most people in this audience are working harder today for less money than they were making 10 years ago. Isn't that right? But the challenge for us is to go beyond that. So we got to get rid of trickle-down economics. And nobody wants to go back to tax and spend economics. We have a new way. I fought to change the Democratic Party, to challenge the Democratic Party, and to fix every microphone in Georgia. And we did change the Democratic Party. You read our platform. It says the best social program is a good job and a growing economy, and that's what we stand for. For the first time in a generation, the Democrats are running on their platform and the Republicans are running away from theirs and from their record. We have a program that has generated support all over America from Democrats, Republicans, and Independents. In Chicago a few days ago, 400 business executives, more than a third of them Republicans. Last week in Silicon Valley, where all the computer companies are, 21 high-tech executives, two-thirds of them Republicans said, we are sick of the Bush quail trickle-down economic failure. We want a new direction, and we want you to give it to us, and we will. Here is what we stand for. Number one, the only way you ever create jobs is through investment. So we say, no more across-the-board tax cuts for the wealthy. Instead, we'll say, we're going to give tax incentives, but only if you invest in factories, in businesses, in farms, and putting the American people back to work. We'll give tax breaks for that. We say we're going to take every dollar by which that defense budget is reduced, and instead of spending it on the SNL ripoff and more for the same health care, we're going to put it back into the American economy to create jobs for the 21st century and transportation and communication and solid waste recycling.